Peace and blessings, good people. This is your boy, Shaka Zulu and Kruma, also known as Who Was the General 2014. Just wanted to show you a couple of more things that I picked up from Dollar General today. You know, I keep trying to uh, relay the message to you that building a medical bug out bag doesn't have to be super expensive. And it doesn't. We're talking about Dollar Tree now. So, of course, everything is a dollar. All right? So, I got some um, extra strength in my green strength, Excedrin. Sleep Aid. You already know what that's for. Pediatric electrolytes. And, you know, it doesn't have to be just for children. If somebody is suffering some sort of dehydration from diarrhea or vomiting... You definitely want to have this on tap or stock up on some Gatorade. I don't really know what the shelf life of Gatorade is, though, but I don't, <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I don't really know the shelf life of this right here. But just for, you know, something to fill up the medical bag, a medical bug out bag that I'm, that I'm putting together, I definitely want to have this on tap. Understand? Um, nasal relief spray. Oxymetazoline, of course, is used for nasal decongestion. Um, nasal decongestion, excuse me. Uh, hay fever, allergies, stuff like that. 12 hour relief, pretty good stuff. Uh, but make sure you don't give it to children under the age of six. All right? What else I got over here? Some bug bite relief. Like I said, all self explanatory stuff here. Some more allergy medicine, tension headache relief. Picked up some Epsom salt, two different types right here. And I'm going to definitely talk about that in a minute, like I did with the uh, witch hazel and baking soda. Picked up a couple of handkerchiefs and some glad trash bags. It's only four, but like I said, it was it's a dollar. So, you know. And I know you're probably thinking, some of you are saying, the heck do you need a trash bag for in a, you know, a survival situation? Well, trust me when I tell you, we're going to get into it. All right? So, like I said, you're not going to go broke. Hit up Dollar Tree. It's not like they're paying me to say this stuff or anything, but I'm telling you because I've been getting great stuff there. I'm not going broke doing this stuff, and you shouldn't go broke. You should be able to build your bug out bag, build your medical bug out bag, and get your survival stuff without going broke. You do it little by little. That's all. That's all I'm trying to relate to you. All right? So I'm going to get into uh, Epsom salt stuff, the bandanas, and the trash bags, and why that's needed for survival. Let me move this stuff out the way here, and we're going to get into it. Because we definitely need to talk about this. All right. Let's talk about these handkerchiefs for a minute. Never mind the colors. I'm not about to go into the history of the blood and the crypts or anything like that. This is what they had. This is what I purchased. All right. It's just that simple. Okay. So what can we use the bandanas for? Well, in a survival situation, bandanas could be used as a bandage. That's first and foremost. It could be used as a bandage. You can cover an open wound, uh, use it to keep any type of foreign matter out. You dig? So, yeah, you definitely want to have some bandanas around. Uh, it could be used as a sling, you know, in case you have to immobilize an injured arm or something like that. Um, ice pack you know just load it up with ice place it where it's needed you know some things that um, as a matter of fact some of the things that I'm going to tell you about might even be common sense but in case you don't know and you're just getting into this whole survival preparedness subject because you have some concerns about a shaky uncertain future yeah I'm about to uh, I'm about to bless you with some info. The bandanas could be used as a dust or a smoke mask. 
right? Not as good as the N95 mask, of course, but it'll work. Um, or you could actually soak it with some water and wear it over your nose and your mouth, you know, to stop smoke inhalation. Uh, let's see what else would we do with this. I mean, there's so much stuff and I probably won't even, like as much stuff as I plan on telling you, I probably won't even touch on everything that I could have. Um, but it can be used for an eye patch. Like if you take one of the bandanas and you fold it into a smaller square and then you can wear it over your eye and use the other one to tie it around your head to keep it in place. Hmm? Not bad, right? Uh, a pressure dressing. You know, it's just for you to just take, you know, put direct pressure on a wound. Um, splint binding. Bind up a splint with this, yes. Um, you can tie a splint to a limb and to, also to keep it straight. I'm quite sure that you've seen things like that in movies, television shows, any type of like, you know, situation where it was post apocalyptic or some emergency type movie it went down and some natural or man made disaster happened and someone had to do that or somebody got caught in the forest and hurt themselves and like, oh my goodness, what am I going to do? And they wind up tying their leg up to a couple pieces of sticks or whatever. Now, of course, it might not be as simple as doing that, though, but it can be done, especially if you have help. Um, you can use it as what they call a compression wrap. Not to be uh, mistaken for the pressure dressing, which goes on the wound. A compression wrap is basically when you use the handkerchief or the bandana to for a sprained wrist or an ankle so you can tie it up really tight to keep it from bending that's what I mean when I say compression wrap as opposed to a pressure dressing um, and anybody that's already in the medical field I know you know these things already so if you're going to show this video which I'm hoping that you do to um, your friends, family um, your, your, your religious or civic or social groups or whatever like that which I'm hoping that you do share with them you can go into it a little bit further and even uh, demonstrate it if you if you have it available or have the time. Um, you can use it as a cold compress. Um, if you have some uh, water, you you wet up the bandana, you know, squeeze it out, you know, keeping it still a little bit damp, and then just you know just take the thing and you know spin it around your head so you can like cool off the temperature of it or whatever, and then just use it to cool off a burn or a bee sting or to soothe a headache or something like that. All right. Makes sense, right? Um, you can use it to bathe. Oh, yes. Definitely use it for bathing. Um, wash yourself head to toe if need be. Or just clean your face. And then you use another one to dry. You understand? Female hygiene. See? Didn't think I was going to go there with it, did you? Um, if you're dealing with a survival situation and of course more than likely you're going to have uh females that that are that are whether whether a, you know adult teenage you know what I'm saying? whatever you're going to have females in your group more than likely or if you come across somebody in your travels if you don't already have tampons or feminine pads which actually have awesome survival uses in their own right um a bandana can be used as a substitute just, just something to think about. That's all. Just, just putting some ideas in your head. Um, it could be used if you're in an area. Maybe a, uh, you might be in a wooded area. All right. In forest or something like that. And, um, and there's little or no foliage around. You can use it as toilet paper. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll more than likely do the trick. Even though I, I probably wouldn't wash it and use it again. But, you know, just something for you to keep in mind. Um, maybe you might come across somebody or you might have somebody in your group that has a, a an infant, you know, a toddler that needs a diaper. And remember, this is this is how they did it back in the day. You know, they used that cloth diaper so you can, you know, fold it up in that triangle the way that they used to do and, you know, go old school with it and use it as a cloth diaper for an infant or um, a small child. You know, you can use it as a what's the word I'm looking for? impromptu 
That's a good word for you. Impromptu baby crib. A, not a baby crib, a baby bib you can use it for. You know, you don't want the kid to make a little, you know, too much of a mess or whatever like that, you know, by they, you know, mess up all your clothes and things like that. So, yeah, you can do those things. You know, that's pretty good stuff, right? This, I mean, this is just the bandana we're talking about here. We didn't even get to the the uh, the trash bag or the Epsom salt yet. Um, have you ever seen a movie or an old television show where you got some hobo getting on a train or whatever like that, and they got their stuff on a on a on a stick, but it's wrapped up in a bandana, right? They call that a hobo style bindle. So you know, you tie the opposing corners together, make a little bag, and carry loose items. Or Maybe you had to go out and do some foraging for like nuts and berries and things like that. And you can use the bandana to hold these things. Right? Makes sense? Uh, maybe I want to say a small item pack you can use. Like maybe you got uh, nuts or bolts or maybe some spent brass or whatever like that. Or just to keep things, you know, organized in your, in your backpack, your bob, your bug out bag. You know, say I saw a small item pack that can be used for um, noise reduction. Um, you can wrap up noise making items that are in your pack. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that's good OPSEC, O P S E C. When I say OPSEC, that's an acronym for uh, Operation Security, which we can get into at another time because that's going to be lengthy. Um, whether it's um, a shit hits the fan type of situation or you're dealing with just chilling in nature. You know, say you don't want to disturb the animals. You know, tie your stuff up in your bag so you don't make too much noise. And of course, for the first part of that, though, you don't want to give away your location making all that noise either. So, yeah, just keep that in mind. Oh, uh, they got something called tethering as well. Um, so you can tie water bottles to your bug out bag so it's easily accessible. Uh, you can use bandanas as a sponge so you could soak up morning dew or rain water and squeeze it into your mouth if you need a drink. The obvious would be uh, a napkin. You know, wipe your mouth, your hands, whatever, your face. Because, <laughs> you know, just because it's a zombie apocalypse doesn't mean you want to be a slob. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I'm silly. I know. That's what I do. But, you know, this is, these, are, these are serious situations, though. You know, I'm just trying to, you know, make it light. Especially for those that are just starting out, people that are just beginning in this journey or whatever. You know, I'm trying to make it light. That's all. Um, water filtration. Um, as a, Like a, a pre-filter, if you will. Um, but it, it will definitely stop large particulate articles from clogging up your main filter so that's that's what you definitely want to work on yeah that, that that'll that work you know what I mean um, you can use that as a hot glove in case you're cooking boiling tea kettle out there you know picking up a pot or pan you don't want to burn yourself so just use it like that uh, what else what else what else what else a coffee or a tea filter yeah you can use it just like a tea bag while you're, while you're flavoring up your water. Especially if you went out foraging for like berries, leaves, or whatever like that to, to make your tea. But definitely make sure you know what you're doing. This is when your knowledge of, you know, plant identification and bushes and, and, and bark and, and shrubs and all of that stuff come into play. Because you definitely don't want to go foraging and bring back the wrong things and drink that. And then you're going to have a whole heap of other problems. Um, you can use it for a dish rag. That's self-explanatory. Wash off any, you know, pots or stuff like that you might have and, you know, that you bugged out with or bugged in with. Use it as a head covering, right? You'd think that was like, like the most common use for it, right? You always see people wearing it on their head. But you can protect your head and your neck from the sun. That's usually the most common reason why people wear that on their head. Um, you can use it as a sleep mask. You know what I'm saying? Covering your eyes. You know what I'm saying? They help you sleep during the day if you travel a lot at night. Um, a sweatband. That's self-explanatory. Uh, what else we got here? What else? What else? What else? A hair tie. Women out there might need something to cover that, you know, pull their hair back, tie it up or whatever like that. 
boom, you got your bandana, take care of that. Um, you can use it as improvised gloves, actually, which would be very, very cool. Um, in case you got to, you know, protect your hands if you got to rock climb or you got to handle some type of sharp object or something like that. Yeah, just wrap those things around your hand and just, you know, go to work. Do your thing. You can use them as ear covering. How's that sound, right? Just like earmuffs. You know, try to stave off some uh, frostbite on your ear, ears. To cool your head is, is, is a, another common one. You know, just soaking it with water and wearing it on your head. It can be used as a snow or a sand mask. You know what I'm saying? If you, if, you, if you take two of these, you know, there we go right there, two of them. You, you, t you make them tight, tight together. And you put them over your eyes, you can prevent like snow blindness, keeping sand and debris out of the eyes. So let me tell you something. This is $2 well spent right here. Um, weapon concealment. How about that? Think about that. Um, you could put your firearm underneath it, or, or you know, hide a knife in it. No, you want to hide. Maybe you hide the outline of whatever weapon you might have. Disguise it. Put that in there. Um, you can use it as a. Have you all ever heard of what they call a flail weapon? F L A I L, a flail weapon. It, it's it's. It's when you tie, a, you know, you get a, like a large stone or something like that, and you, and you, you, you uh, put it in one corner of it, then you, you, then you tie it up. As a matter of fact, did you all ever see Steven Seagal's movie, uh, Out for Justice, and he got into that fight in the pool hall, and he took that, it was either a rag or a bandana out of his pocket, and he put a pool ball in it, and he wrapped it up, and then just pulled it tight, and he had an instant weapon. That's what I mean when I say a flail weapon. F-L-A-I-L. -L. Um, it could also be used as a sling. Think think David and Goliath, right? You 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 fold it into a strip, right? And and or like a sweatband. You 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 grab the corners, put a rock in it, swing it around, let one end go, send the rock flying. Seriously, on some David and Goliath stuff. I would really, really love to learn how to become efficient doing that because people there's probably people in the world to this day that still hunt like that too but yeah you can use it as a flail weapon or a sling um I'm, I'm gonna get into a, something a little bit more serious right now um you can use it as a wick or a fuse in a in a, in a shit hits the fan combat situation it can be used as a wick for a Molotov cocktail Yes, I'm going there with it. Yes, I'm going there with it. Or a fuse for an IED, an improvised explosive device. But now, let's hope that you and I don't have to do that. All right, we don't want to get to that point. By the way, this video was made for educational purposes only. <laughs> um, listen, that's, that's, that's what shit hitting the fan means. You know what I'm saying? People are going to be out here going buck wild, buck stupid out here. And, you, you know, you take any natural or man-made disaster, any war, any war-torn city or country, people are bugging out. When you, when, you, when you can't get food, when you can't get clothing, when you can't get, you know, say, uh, uh, medical attention, when you can't have uh, uh, or don't have access to fresh water or anything like that, these things will make animals out of people. Not that people are animals, but it will make it. When you're hungry, you'll become a savage to get some food. And you will probably almost do anything to make sure you and your family can eat. You understand what I'm saying to you? All right. So this is not something one would wish for, but it is the reality of the world. And there are things that are going on in the world right now. If you look at, I'll give you an example that survivalists always bring up. The situation going on in Venezuela. And I would, it would behoove you to look it up. What's going on in Venezuela right now? Food shortages, anarchy, looting, rioting. You know, the government forces going after people, going after dissident. You, you all look at that as another country like that can't happen in the United States. 
yeah, it really can. It can happen anywhere. And, you know, while, while I'm not going to get all, like, sociopolitical about it, though, that's the reason why the Second Amendment was written. It wasn't written so people can go hunting. No, idiots. Stop listening to these dumb politicians out here talking that nonsense. The Second Amendment was made for the people in case the government got out of control. And I'm going to say that again for those of you in the cheap seats. The Second Amendment was made in case for the people for if the government gets out of control. You understand? So, yeah. I know I'm talking about bandanas, though, but this bears on the conversation. So, yeah. I'm going there with it. Because this is... You know, another thing that people call this, they, they don't just call it the shit hits the fan or SHTF. They call it WROL, which means without rule of law. It, situations can become that way so fast. And just because you don't see it the way that, you, just because you don't see it as much going on in other countries, these things are happening. In, in, in Central America, South America, in the so-called Middle East, on the continent of Africa, it's going on throughout Europe. It, these things are going on, and it can very well happen here in the States. Hence why it's called preparedness. You understand? Um, I'm going to move on. I'm going to still keep on it, though, but I'm going to move on. It can be used as a blindfold. Because if you may have to take a prisoner, yeah, I said it, I'm going there. Oh, yeah, I'm going to get gangster with this one. You don't want that individual to see what you're doing or where you're going. All right? So on top of that, it can be used as a gag. Listen, listen, listen. You came into my camp trying to take this and do that by my shut your ass up. Yeah, I said it, I'm going there. <laughs> Put that in their mouth. Shut them up. They can be used as handcuffs. Oh, yeah. They shouldn't be allowed to use their hands. <laughs> Bonus points if you could tie their hands together around the tree. <laughs> um, it can be used for padding. Like if you if you put it on your shoulder and you're, and you're forced to carry or you have to carry heavier loads of things so you can use it as a buffer between you know your your shoulder pack bag whatever like that in your shoulder um you can use it especially if you have a, a brighter color uh, bandana it can be used for signaling that's self-explanatory you know what i'm saying um you can use it for a fire making fire or what they refer to as a char cloth um you can soak it in oil use it as a torch i know you've seen that in movies and television shows before or you can use it as backup tinder for emergency fire starting. You know, as long as it's dry, cut off some piece or whatever like that, use it to start a fire. Um, you can write notes on it. Maybe if you have like a Sharpie or any other type of permanent marker, you can, you know, write write some, uh, some messages on there. You can mark a trail with it. You know what I'm saying? Even either use it whole, either use it whole, or or cut it up into pieces, and then mark a trail with it. Um, and then before you leave an area, you know you just go and you collect it. Not bad, right? And you can also use it for something. Um, I think they call it what's that word? Cordage. Yeah, cordage. You can either tear off strips of this thing, or you can use the whole thing twisted into a cord. You know. So that that's that's my my take on the bandanas. Now I know that there's probably more. Like I said, I'm not a survival expert. I'm not a preparedness expert. I'm just somebody that has you know I've been looking and studying into these things for quite some time. I've learned some things. You know I'm trying to become more practical with the things that I'm learning right now. You know what I'm saying so I can be able to explain it to you better as an experienced prepper. You understand? But um, you know I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So um, hopefully you enjoy what I said with that. And I'm going to move on to my next thing. Um, so we're going to move these to the side real quick. And I'm going to come over here with this Epsom salt. What do we got here? A 
soaking aid for minor sprains and bruises, nourishes sore muscles, used as a saline laxative, great for gardening use as a plant nutrient. Didn't know that, did you? Because, you know, Epsom salt is called magnesium sulfate. All right? Y'all didn't know. Soothing uh, relief from overexertion and stiffness for muscle cramps, soreness, and fatigue. Calming and relaxing soak aid. All right? <sighs> so why Epsom salt as part of a survival bag? Hmm. Well, one of the first things we need to know about Epsom salt is that it can be used as a natural face wash. Yes, it can. Epsom salt is a natural face wash. Um, like baking soda, it can. I'm not gonna be as. It's not gonna be as uh, lengthy as what I just did with the bandanas, though. But there are a few things that we should know about Epsom salt. Just keep a little bit around here and there. Um, it can be used to remove blood. Uh, uh blood. <laughs> remove splinters like baking soda. Yeah. It, it pretty much does the same thing. It reduces inflammation. It, it, it softens up the skin around the, the splinter. And it makes it easier to extract. Simple, right? Um, believe it or not, uh, magnesium sulfate, or just magnesium in general, is used actually to regulate blood sugar. Do you know anybody that's diabetic? I do. You know what I'm saying? If you got anybody that's diabetic, it can be it can be used seriously. Or just taking magnesium in general. But I'm gonna get into that in, in a minute. Um it can it can it can help to it can help the the body's natural ability to, to use and produce insulin. Magnesium is actually practically a forgotten wonder drug, if you didn't know. And, you know, I, I, I think I might have said it before. If I didn't, I'm going to say it now. Getting our health in order should be the first order of business in survival training. We got to get our health under control. You got weight to lose? Go on out there and make it happen. Change your diet. You don't have to go on a diet. Just change your diet. Add some more... Fruits and vegetables to your diet. Um, go out walking after dinner instead of sitting down in front of the television. You know, do some things. Get yourself healthy. You know what I'm saying? Get a gym membership. They're pretty inexpensive. Or work out at home. I've been doing a lot more of that lately. You know, doing uh, some unconventional workouts. But yeah, get that magnesium in your system. Even if you just go out and, and, and purchase a... Uh, or get your health in order though but since we're talking about magnesium sulfate get some magnesium into your system you have no idea the benefits Based, believe it or not at least 80% of the American public is actually magnesium deficient which of course leads to so many health problems like diabetes like heart problems or heart disease like um, MS and, and all of these uh, crazy types of things because blood pressure problems because the, the way that they farm our food which is part of the reason why we need to purchase land and grow our own food um, the way that they do it the process of making or getting our food to the table or into the stores it depletes the soil of magnesium so most people are actually magnesium deficient so taking magnesium would actually be a big benefit to you um Epsom salt could actually deal with bug bites, poison ivy relief, if you if you make a paste out of it. Um, if you are growing food, if you have your own land, if you if you have a garden, um, di uh, I was about to say diatomaceous earth, uh, magnesium sulfate actually keeps away raccoons and slugs. Raccoons actually hate the smell of Epsom salt. So that's something for you to keep in mind if you have a, that kind of problem with your uh, with your garden. Um, and you want to try to get Epsom salt for your gardens as well because it actually boosts the magnesium in the soil. So if you, if you if you're trying to get greener grass, thicker grass, if you're trying to get tastier vegetables, or or, or prettier flowers, believe it or not. 
Um, yeah, and all of this actually does go with survival and preparedness, though, because if, or better yet, I'm not even going to say if, when there is some sort of societal breakdown, uh, trucks aren't going to be rolling into your area with, with, with any food. You're going to have to be growing your own food. Have some stored away and be growing your own. You know how to protect it and all that stuff, though. That's another subject for another day. But, you know, we... we you're going to have to start growing your own food and having magnesium in the soil is something that you definitely want to have to help your, your, your crops, help your plants. Why? Because magnesium in the soil actually helps plants to produce more chlorophyll and allows the plants to, to soak up more nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus. We need those in the, in the plants. You understand? I mean, some plants need more of that than others, but it is what it is. Um, and before when I was talking about magnesium in general, having that in our bodies and being healthy and that being the first part of survival training, survival and preparedness. Um, if you know anybody that might, because you might have it or you might know somebody with it. You know anybody with MS, multiple sclerosis, you know anybody with any sort of autoimmune disease, guess what? Magnesium would help them tremendously. We're dealing with muscle aches and pains and spasms and that nerve inflammation and pain. Yeah, magnesium. Get that in your system. Even if you don't have it, you want that in your body. You understand what I'm saying to you? It, 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 it helps promote normal blood pressure. It maintains muscles. It maintains nerves. It prevents heart attacks. Hmm? It helps over 300 different types of biochemical reactions in the body. You got to have magnesium in your system you understand um and where can you get magnesium what foods have what foods what foods hold on hold on let me go into my mental rolodex real quick magnesium 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 um spinach that's my biggest one that's my that's my second favorite um vegetable i love broccoli but spinach very very high in magnesium um beans peas um Almonds, cashews, you know, a couple of different types of nuts, uh, brown rice, corn, whole grains, wheat bran, avocado, cabbage, cucumber. I know I've said at least two or three things on this list, though, that you all can eat or you like to eat. Or you probably are eating on a regular basis, so you're probably getting a good amount of magnesium in your system. All right? So, yeah, definitely remember that. Food's rich in magnesium. Um... Yeah, but that's pretty much it for, for um, I'm quite sure that there's more for Epsom salt, but yeah, that's what I'm going to just deal with that for now. All right. So let's move on to my third thing here. What do I have here? I got a glad four trash bags. What can we do with a trash bag? Man, listen, um, 